Do you think it is possible to calculate the overall number of stars? When you look up at the night sky, you may wonder how many stars there are in the cosmos. In the whole sky, there are 9,096 stars visible to the human eye. To view more, you'll need a telescope to uncover stars that are fainter than the naked eye can perceive. On a really dark night, the human eye can only see roughly 2,000 stars from any particular location on Earth. Stars are massive celestial entities comprised primarily of hydrogen and helium that generate light and heat from the churning nuclear forges within their cores. The spots of light we see in the sky, aside from our Sun, are all light years away from Earth. They are made up mostly of stars. They were among the earliest things to emerge in the cosmos. The Sun is the nearest star to Earth. From its beginning until adulthood, a star the size of our Sun takes around 50 million years, which means that for the next 10 billion years, our Sun will be in this mature state. Countless stars fill the sky above you, or maybe none at all, depending on cloud cover and where you're standing. Light pollution makes stargazing practically impossible in cities and other heavily populated locations. In some regions of the planet, however, the night sky is so black that looking up exposes it in all its rich, heavenly grandeur. For a variety of reasons, ancient societies looked to the sky. They could monitor the seasons for farming and map paths across the oceans by detecting distinct combinations of stars, known as constellations, and charting their travels. There is a plethora of constellations to choose from. Many, like Cassiopeia and Orion the Hunter, are named after mythological figures. Others, such as Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, and Canis Major, the Big Dog, are called after the creatures they resemble. Obviously, we've discovered a number of pretty bizarre and unique stars and exoplanets in the last several decades. It appears that we are discovering an increasing number of strange stars, and with each discovery, we will learn more about our own solar system, and of course, our own galaxy. Here are two recent star discoveries, for example. Scientists from the University of Tübingen, led by Professor Klaus Werner, have found a strange new sort of star that is coated in the byproduct of helium burning. One such star is called PG1654-322, and the other PG1528-025. They are between 10,000 and 25,000 light years away from Earth. It is likely that the stars were created as a result of a rare occurrence known as a stellar merger event. Usually, stars form amidst dust clouds, which are found across most galaxies. The Orion Nebula is a well-known example of a dust cloud. Deep within these clouds, turbulence creates knots with enough mass to cause the gas and dust to collapse under their own gravitational force. The material at the core of the cloud begins to heat up as it compresses. This heated core in the center of the collapsing cloud is known as a protostar, and it will one day become a star. According to three-dimensional computational models of star formation, collapsing gas and dust clouds may break up into two or three blobs, which would explain why the Milky Way's stars are generally paired or in clusters of several stars. As the cloud collapses, a dense, heated core emerges, which continues to collect dust and gas as it grows in size. There are several possibilities for what will happen to the leftover dust. It might form planets, asteroids or comets, or it could just remain as dust. It is possible that the cloud will not collapse at a steady rate in some instances. In January 2004, an amateur astronomer named James McNeil spotted a tiny nebula in the constellation of Orion that arose unexpectedly near the nebula Messier 78. The nebula was named after James McNeil, who discovered it. While looking at McNeil's nebula with their telescopes, astronomers from all around the world were surprised to discover that its brightness appeared to change over time. The answer to this puzzle was discovered from observations made with NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The interplay between the young star's magnetic field and the surrounding atmosphere generates periodic surges in brightness. The surprising findings about these two strange stars were published in the Royal Astronomical Society's monthly notices. Unlike typical stars, which have surfaces made up of hydrogen and helium, the stars identified by Werner and his colleagues had surfaces made up of carbon and oxygen, as well as the ashes of helium burning, an unusual composition for a star. When you consider that the new stars have temperatures and radii that indicate they are still burning hydrogen in their cores, 
the issue gets even more perplexing. This is something that is generally found in more mature stars than the ones identified by Werner and his team in the study. A second publication, co-authored by astronomers from the University of La Plata and the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics, presents an explanation of how the galaxies formed alongside the work of Professor Werner and his team. To put it another way, lead author Miller Bertolami from the Institute for Astrophysics of La Plata believes that these stars may have originated in a very uncommon type of stellar merger event between two white dwarf stars. White dwarfs are the burning hot remains of bigger stars that have used up all of their nuclear fuel. Due to the narrowing orbit induced by the emission of gravitational waves, stellar mergers have been seen between white dwarfs in neighboring binary systems. Miller Bertolami says, We believe that, in binary systems produced with very particular masses, a carbon and oxygen-rich white dwarf can be disturbed and wind up on top of a helium-rich one leading to the birth of these stars. Binary stars are two stars that revolve around a shared point of mass. The primary star is the brighter of the two stars, while the secondary star is the dimmer of the two stars. In situations when the stars are of comparable brightness, the discoverer's designation is applied. The orbits of binary pairs can be used to classify them. Wide binaries are stars that are separated from one another by their orbits. These stars grow alone, with minimal influence from their partners. They may have originally housed a third star, which expelled the distant companion while being ejected as well. Close binaries, on the other hand, develop in close proximity and are capable of transferring mass from one to the other. Some near-binary stars' primary devour their companion's material, sometimes producing a gravitational force strong enough to drag the smaller star fully in. Binary star systems are the most accurate way for astronomers to calculate a star's mass. Astronomers can compute the size of the pair as they tug on each other, and then use that information to determine the temperature and radius. These characteristics aid in the identification of solitary main-sequence stars throughout the cosmos. At this time, there are no stellar evolutionary theories that can completely explain the newly discovered stars. For the team to be able to determine whether or not these mergers will actually take place, more sophisticated models are required. These models may not only assist in the team's knowledge of these stars, but they may also throw light on the late evolution of binary systems and how their stars exchange mass as they age, which would be of great interest. The creation of the helium-covered stars will continue to be a mystery until more complex models of binary star evolution can be developed by the scientific community. Well, that's all there is for now. Until we learn more and uncover more strange stars and planets, thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. And if you have any ideas for videos you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments below. See you next time!